The spookiest month of the year is finally here, and if you're looking for some spine-chilling hidden gems to stream right now, you've come to the right place. Ghosts, curses, evil spirits, twisted mysteries, creepy weirdos, and even some very hungry mermaids, there is something for everyone on this list, and a lot of these movies are actually available to stream for free on Tubi. So get your watch list ready because I'm about to add to it. As always, I'm looking forward to even more recommendations from you in the comments below, but let's get started. Opening this list is an Indonesian film that really showcases why sometimes if you don't know much about your family, it's really for the best. Let's just say going to investigate this issue was a bad call for a lead character. Impedagore tells the story of Maya, a young woman who decides to travel to a remote village hoping to uncover the truth about her past and maybe even secure an inheritance from her parents. With her best friend traveling by her side, she quickly realizes the village holds many dark secrets and her family's history is a lot more complicated than she imagined. The film is mysterious and atmospheric and the writer-director Joko Anvar knows how to gradually build build tension and suspense using every tool available to him. The remote village is a beautiful, rich location, the old ancestral home is the definition of eerie, the drama and the creepy elements go hand in hand, there is some pretty shocking imagery and gore involved, and the sound design completes the experience. There are a lot of folk horror elements present as well, which is something that always adds to the atmosphere, and while it is one of those movies that occasionally requires you to suspend spend your disbelief and just go with whatever you're seeing on screen, this chilling supernatural story is worth it as it quickly turns into something that's truly unsettling. Is there a curse? Is this village a cult? Why is everyone acting so strange? And what are they hiding? All of that is for Maya and you, the audience, to find out. Now, my next pick is one of my most recent underrated horror discoveries and not not only is it an interesting take on an exorcism story, but it is also a surprisingly great found footage film. The last exorcism revolves around Reverend Marcus, who has been making money performing fake exorcisms for years and is now letting a documentary crew accompany him on what's supposed to be his final exorcism in order to dispel the myth of demonic possession. As you can imagine, this final exorcism doesn't exactly go according to plan, and the Reverend has to consider the possibility of evil forces actually being present. Here's why this movie is great. As a found footage movie, it doesn't go for the boring format of having the audience wait around through a bunch of nothing for a few jump scares. While it still features a few typical found footage gimmicks, there's a legitimately engaging story here and the cameras are present for a good reason. As an exorcism movie, it actually offers a fresh twist on a story about demonic possession and it keeps you guessing. You're not entirely sure what's real and what isn't for a long time. There are twists and turns along the way and it's going to take a while for you to find out what's actually going on here. The ending really took me by surprise. It's very unfortunate that the last exorcism seems to have gotten lost among the many low quality derivative found footage movies released around that time, but I promise you this one is different. It's effective, it's spooky, and it's far from an average entry within the subgenre. This next film is probably the weirdest thing on this list, but if unique is what you're looking for, this one is for you. Remember those hungry mermaids I mentioned in the beginning? Well, here they are. And I get it, sometimes when you're hungry you want something new, fresh, and delicious, but you just don't have time to cook and takeout is ridiculously expensive these days. So what do you do? Turn into a hungry monster? No, because thankfully the lovely sponsor of today's video, Factor, is the solution to this problem. Factor is here to make your life easier, delivering nutritious, wholesome meals that are ready to eat within minutes, and most importantly, 
taste delicious. There are tons of meals to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie options. And with the menu being updated weekly, there is always something new to try that will fit your taste, whether you're in the mood for seafood, meat, or something plant-based. Meanwhile, you're saving so much time on skipping a grocery store trip and meal prep, you're definitely going to be able to squeeze another spooky movie into your schedule. Listen, I was moving recently, as you can tell by my new setup, and you know what I didn't have time for? Grocery shopping and figuring out what's for dinner. Ordering Factor to take care of that was honestly the best decision, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Factor meals are delivered fresh, never frozen, right to your doorstep on a flexible plan that fits your lifestyle. And if you feel like being a little bit extra, you can level up your order with add-ons like juices, snacks, desserts, and more. But don't just take my word for it, try it for yourself with this amazing deal. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code IMPRESSIONBLEND50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, that's factor75.com with my code IMPRESSIONBLEND50 for 50% off your first box. Don't become a hungry monster. Try something new and yummy for dinner and thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now back to Hungry Mermaids. The Lure is a Polish horror musical set in the 80s and it's a loose retelling of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale classic, The Little Mermaid. It's about two mermaid sisters who sing at a nightclub and one of them inevitably falls in love with an unworthy guy for whom she's willing to sacrifice a part of herself. Oh, and these mermaids? they eat people. Now, as weird as this sounds, and it's definitely going to be too weird for some, the lure does a beautiful job bringing the horror elements into this classic story, going for that magical combination of dark and whimsical. This is why I love it when horror takes on fairy tales. Yes, making this into a musical that occasionally goes for the 80s music video look is quite the choice, and yet somehow how it works. The overall mood and tone are perfect. The mermaid tail design is interesting and different from what you normally see. And the two actresses who play the sisters are fantastic. They're very different from each other, which is an important part of the story, but they're both enchanting and memorable in their own ways. Are some people going to wonder what the hell did they just watch by the end of this movie? Absolutely, and that reaction is completely understandable, but apparently the lure is my kind of weird. Sticking with the whole weird theme, my next pick is the twisted story of May. This one, she's definitely not like other girls. May is a psychological horror film about a woman struggling to connect with other people. As she becomes increasingly more desperate to find a real friend, she makes one awkward choice after another, which eventually leads her to some much more drastic methods. I'm keeping things particularly vague here because going on this bizarre and horrifying journey with May is part of the fun, though I will warn you, if secondhand embarrassment comes easily to you, parts of this movie can be a challenge to watch. May is definitely one of the most effectively disturbing and memorable movies I've ever seen. And as it explores themes of isolation, loneliness, and the need to fit in through the lens of psychological horror, it also sprinkles in some dark humor to balance things out. Angela Bettis is simply unforgettable as the lead and will make you feel both empathy and terror when it comes to her character. This is truly one of the most underappreciated horror films out there that actually understands alienation and obsession. Plus, if a woman unraveling into madness is a trope you enjoy, May is an absolute must watch. I am sure many of you are already familiar with Kiyoshi Kurosawa because of his chilling masterpiece, Cure. And if for some reason you haven't seen Cure, that's a bonus recommendation for you. You have to watch it as soon as possible. But the movie I'm putting on this list is his techno horror gem, Pulse. Yes, there was a terrible American remake, 
we're not going to talk about it. I am shocked by how underwatched this movie is, despite being very well received back when it came out, and over two decades later, it is still one of the best internet-related horror films. The story is set in Tokyo and centers around the idea of ghosts being able to invade the human world through the internet, following two seemingly disconnected storylines that eventually converge Pulse will fill you with existential dread as it explores our relationship with technology. The film was definitely ahead of its time in 2001, but it's eerily relevant today as it depicts a crumbling society and a very particular type of loneliness in a busy tech-oriented world. While the pacing can occasionally feel a bit slow, especially considering its two-hour runtime, the film is as atmospheric and creepy as it is thought-provoking. One of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to techno-horror is that most of it boils down to your basic technology equals bad message, but Pulse is smarter than that. It aims to explore human connection, mortality, and isolation from the perspective of the digital age, and it's also the kind of movie that slowly gets under your skin as it builds up the tension for some genuinely disturbing moments. Because as our characters were looking to connect with other people, they ended up connecting with a bit more than what they bargained for. Disturbing videos, overwhelming sadness, and ghosts trying to invade the world of the living. Now, Mike Flanagan has become a spooky season staple over the past five years, particularly because of his multiple great Netflix original series. But he has some really good horror films as well, and his most underrated movie is Ouija Origin of Evil. Yes, the prequel to that awful Ouija movie from 2014, but you can completely ignore that and watch the prequel as a standalone. Set in LA in the 1960s, the movie is about a widowed mother who runs a seance business and her two daughters who help her out. The mother, Alice decides to incorporate a Ouija board to spice up her readings, and while she's been knowingly tricking her customers all along, thanks to the board, something from the other side does get through. Unfortunately, this leads to her younger daughter, Doris, getting possessed by an evil entity. While this might sound like your pretty standard possession movie, and in some ways it is, the film is actually darker and creepier than you would expect. What really makes it work are the family dynamics and the drama at the core of the movie. It's a really good story with fleshed out characters and the writing isn't just there to get you from one scare to the next. It's also an interesting period piece that uses subtle stylistic choices, which would have been appropriate in the movie that was actually made decades ago, making the whole thing feel very of its time. There is a little bit of questionable CGI involved, but this is a very minor issue because the suspense, the story, and the characters make this spooky gem stand out compared to many other movies in the possession subgenre. Next up, the scariest movie I saw last year also happens to be one of the most underrated ones because for some reason, Incantation has not gotten enough love ever since its release on Netflix. Let me just say this, I don't really get nightmares after watching horror movies, but this one, this one got me. What makes things even spookier is that Incantation is inspired by a true story of a family who believed they were possessed by spirits. This Taiwanese found footage horror film follows a woman who is desperately trying to protect her child from a curse. Just like The Last Exorcism, this is not your stereotypical, boring, shaky cam, here comes a jump scare kind of movie. Okay, there are still a few jump scares, but to be fair, they are very effective and the non-linear storytelling and the incredibly creepy and unsettling footage will keep you watching as the full picture slowly comes together. If you enjoy curse-centered movies like The Ring, one of my personal favorites, Incantation is going to be right up your alley. It does not waste your time, it gets right into it from the very beginning, and something about it just gets under your skin. Plus, it doesn't forget to tell a compelling story featuring a motivated lead character, 
very important. This is yet another example of how effective found footage horror can be when done right. This film uses different cameras, different lighting, different types of footage, depending on what fits the story at that time and how specifically it wants to terrify its viewers at that moment. Thanks for the nightmares, Netflix. Now, this one is for my fellow metal fans. Not that you have to be one to enjoy this movie because it's great regardless, but this is a very metal possession movie. The Devil's Candy revolves around an artist, Jesse, and his family who move into a rural Texas home with a dark and disturbing history. As he begins working on his art in the new house, his work becomes increasingly darker and more sinister. Not to mention, there seem to be some strange voices and visions involved. We also follow the previous occupant of the house who used to hear the same voices and now may or may not be killing people. The movie is a blend of psychological and supernatural horror. It's a twist on a haunted house story. It's tense, it's disturbing, and it's also very distinct when it comes to the aesthetics. The cinematic Photography is memorable, there is a very deliberate color palette, lots of texture, great atmosphere. This movie sticks with you and once again, it really helps to have characters that you want to root for. They actually feel like a very sweet family. So when things start escalating, you're definitely invested. Plus, let's not forget the metal soundtrack and there's even a red electric guitar. I'm really surprised The Devil's Candy doesn't have a bigger following because it has pretty much everything you would want from a horror movie. Suspense, tension, likable characters, a memorable villain, and there is payoff for everything it sets up. Of course, I have to talk about my favorite found footage film that is still somehow very underwatched and underappreciated. It's an excellent horror mystery, and I would go as far as saying that this is one of the most underrated horror films of the 21st century so far. Lake Mungo is an Australian mystery horror film presented as a mockumentary, and the story revolves around a family grieving the loss of a beloved daughter and sister sister, Alice, whose body is found in the lake. Her family suddenly starts experiencing strange things and occurrences in their home, which leads them to discovering that Alice may have been hiding some secrets the family had no idea about. On one hand, the movie is exploring themes of grief and loss, but it's also a compelling and very creepy mystery featuring a lot of twists and turns. On top of that, something about Lake Mungo feels eerily real and and I'm not going to lie, the first time I watched this movie, I had to Google if any of this was actually true. The film is moody, very atmospheric, occasionally pretty sad, and it builds suspense in a very unsettling and haunting way. Instead of trying to shock you, it aims to make you uncomfortable as you begin to question everything you're seeing. It's a pretty unique story written in a way that really pulls you in as you uncover this web of mystery through found footage, old photographs, and personal accounts of people who knew or thought they knew. Alice. Now listen, this next movie is the toughest one on this list to talk about without spoilers, so you're just going to have to trust me that despite what the premise sounds like, Triangle is so much more than your average slasher. Do you like major plot twists? Because Triangle has some plot twists for you. The basic premise is this. Jess, a single mother, joins a group of friends to go on a sailing trip. They get hit by a storm and, as a result, end up stranded on a deserted cruise ship. However, it quickly becomes clear that they are not alone and now it's a story of survival. On its surface, Triangle is a typical slasher complete with a masked killer. But when about halfway through the film, the story takes a turn, which is a spoiler I refuse to reveal, 
everything changes. The best way to watch this movie is to know as little as possible about it, and going in blind will make for a dark, gripping, and disturbing experience. It also leans into a very interesting metaphor that eventually puts everything into perspective, which I once again don't want to spoil. Listen, I know you might be skeptical based on the fact that I can't tell you much about this movie, but it is such a creative, intricate, and different kind of horror thriller starring Melissa George, who, in my opinion, is a very underrated scream queen. Triangle deserves to be way more popular than it is, so I really hope you do take my word for it and check it out. And if you're looking for even more underrated movie recommendations, check out these videos next.